there shall be a great deal of dolphin blood, as they call it, forming in these areas where they've been washed away. As you can see, the water was recent. Looks like people might be looking at something over there. I don't know if it's water or chalk. No, there was chalk over there. going on <clears throat> yo I got a question so I was curious if you read the article I wrote about you and Matt Schmidt and your argument no I don't read anything or watch anything you publish okay um, I wonder if that is that like a conscious decision based on the fact that I mean I don't Darryl... see it like in my feeds I have you blocked on Facebook I'm not terribly interested in it if you have a website I don't know what its address is so I primarily post on Freekeen, but I figured you might have seen it since it was a Freekeen article and it was directly related to your and someone else's conduct. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, if uh, if, if somebody I'm interested in posts something on Freekeen, I might read it, but I haven't seen anything you published. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I was kind of curious as to why you decided to block me on Facebook, like initially. Because it seems to me that you've uh, made a decision uh, to be a rival of mine. So I have certain problems, especially people uh, report posts to Facebook, stuff like that. People in certain factions have been sort of a problem with that. It gets me banned from Facebook. I can't talk for 30 days. As a I generally don't do that. but Generally don't, but very often you change your mind at some point. So I don't know, you know. So the thing is, I'm not, I'm not a really fond of you. You're not really fond of me. No reason for us to interact generally, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's interesting because, like, my approach with activism has been, like, that it's supposed to be open and inclusive. Like, I, think I, don't... I think your approach with activism is to sort of like walk up on people with a camera and be a passive aggressive douchebag is sort of what you do. And you're good at it, you know, you're good at it. Thank you. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not terribly interested in it. I mean, look, you know, from, from all the way back when I came back here and when I came here in 2012, I mean, I come into the CAC, there's fucking markets, not capitalism on the wall. I mean, we just have totally different interests, you know? So I don't, uh, I don't, I don't particularly care for you. You don't particularly care for me. You sought to see me, you know, expelled from institutions and stuff like that. Why would we pretend to be friends with each other? It just kind of seems silly. Right. Well, I guess it's not about pretending to be friends, but still being open to dialogue with people. Like, like I don't block anybody on Facebook. I might disagree with them a lot. They may harass me with messages. I never blocked JP when he was sending me all sorts of messages. Yeah. I just told him to please stop communicating with me. Um, so that's like, you know, a different approach that I take. And I thought that the idea of even if we may disagree with each other on a variety of things that blocking someone from communication is like sort I think of that block somebody, blocking do. somebody from, you know, entry to a building is, you know, a lot worse than, you know, saying, hey, I don't feel like seeing you in my news feeds, you know. Okay. So I would say that, you know, that's a far more divisive activity, whereas, you know, where, where I see you, I don't tend to, you know, create a problem for you. Sure, uh, yeah, I don't for you is, generally. You know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's interesting. Like, uh, I had talked to Mark Edge about the, the uh, panel at Key Invention, media panel. Like, some people thought I was going to sit it out because you were on it. Um, yeah, and I was I, rather surprised to see you there. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, in the sense that's giving something legitimacy, too. Like, deciding not to do something you ordinarily would have done. Um, but at the same time, I feel it's like activists took a stand it seemed collectively or maybe people silently they didn't care but people seem committed to this idea of peace as far as like not promoting uh the idea of seeing someone else hurt or being happy to see someone else hurt and rather always being for peaceful like you know maybe not reality solutions to problems but like you know trying for the best possible outcomes and basically like joking about one thing is one thing but then saying that it's also serious at the same time and like that that's your actual opinion at the same time that's where I decided like for myself that a line would need to be drawn if someone's not saying as a joke you know all these terrible things I may be thinking about this bad politician and then saying like I truly believe these things is like a different thing you know what I'm saying so that's where I myself drew the line and figured that you are not somebody that could be associated with peace activism for it to be have for it to have like any legitimacy as peace activism but a lot of people here changed their minds on that and even though you didn't apologize and you didn't backtrack from anything they decided that you were you would become welcome because you're like uh, normally like a nice guy not out to cause problems and like not a social pariah or anything like that 
So, but to me, it's like, it's about more than that. Like being a principled activist, it's not about like, you know, just social circles or whatever. It's about taking stands. Oh, I, I, I believe the same thing. I think we just have totally different principles. I'm a big fan of reality solutions. I'm trying to solve a problem, you know? So, you know, if, if we want to talk about, you know, what we would like the world to be like, you know, I could think of a lot of different things I'd like the world to be like that probably ain't gonna happen, you know? But as long as people are gonna be initiating force, somebody has to do something to stop it, you know? Right. So, as soon as people stop doing that, you know, I'm happy to forget about using force to stop them until then, you know, that's the world we live in, that's why I carry a handgun, um, you know, so. And I took a different approach, because I moved to Keene, like, I used to carry a gun sometimes, do open carry litter pickups in Manchester, but here I felt it's such an unnecessary place, you never really hear of sh shootings, like, even the riot, I never felt about at any assaults. point. I mean, you know, Derek sure. got assaulted outside of the courthouse, and Derek's as peaceful a guy as it gets, you know, mm -hmm. so I've what, been assaulted you know, in we, we live in a world where people will come up to a guy who's not threatening at all and just kick the shit out of him on the street, and I mean, this is in Keene, New Hampshire, I'm from New York, I signed coke and dope on the streets of fucking Brooklyn, I mean, people will fucking, you know, I've been in really bad conflicts where I couldn't have a gun to protect myself. I feel really good about that, and I think it does a lot to avoid conflicts. I find that people who open carry don't get punched in the face too frequently. Well, Rich Paul did get punched in the face once when he was open carrying. I mean, it happens, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't happen too frequently. Sure. Right? You know. Uh, but imagine how badly it could have gone if Rich decided that he felt his life was in danger, pulled out a gun, and shot someone. Like, he didn't. He even just, he took a punch, like, and decided that because he had a gun, he, need, he needed to not engage in any way. Um, but yeah, but, I mean, I've done uh, that too. I mean, you know, look, I, uh, you know, I carry a gun. It causes me to avoid physical conflicts. You know, where I, whereas, you know, there might be times in this world where I might be inclined to hit somebody. I say, I've got a gun on me. I can't do that. You know, and I might, and I might very well, you know, walk away or carry out some verbally. Whereas I might, you know, have felt justified in using some level of force otherwise. So, you know, there's that thing about the gun too. You know, so, yeah. I mean, but these are matters of preferences, really. I mean, you know, I'm, my, well, I'm here as a result of hundreds of hours of study, okay? Rothbardi and anarcho-capitalism, okay? And it's, and it's about, uh, you know, non-initiation of force. It's not about pacifism. It's not about allowing people to fucking walk all over you. It's about mm -hmm. stopping people from taking your property and protecting your, your person. So, you know, if you have a different philosophy than that, that's fucking fine, you know, but uh, it's not mine. So... I'm, a, I'm a about as principled an activist as it gets. We just have different principles. I would say that, that is something about you stick to what you believe in, and I just disagree with what you believe in. But I think other people try and like skirt around what it is that you're saying to make it seem like it's something it's not. To I be think normal damn near everybody, mind. including you, goes around what I'm saying to make it seem like something else, because that's a popular thing to do in politics, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's the political discourse in America today, even in anarcho-capitalist circles, even in anarchist circles. It's just, it's just a how things tend to go, unfortunately. Okay, um, and one more point about carrying the gun. There was a, in the article I wrote, I mentioned how it seemed like a pseudo threat when you said to Boston Strong, like, if I came back here without my gun, I don't remember exactly what it was you said. I say, but, he said something about the gun. I said, I'll leave the gun at home next time and then you'll really be fucking sorry. And you know. That made it seem like you were saying that if you didn't have the gun, you would initiate, or maybe like be willing to, maybe not initiate violence, but be involved in I, some sort I, of violence. I might, you know, there's, there's situations I think is perfectly legitimate to invite someone, right? So, I mean, if a guy is, insulting me if he's yelling at my house, I don't think I'm out of line to say, what do you want? Do you want to fight somebody, right? Now, I don't do that with a fucking gun on my hip, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that guy was obviously trying to intimidate me. At one point, he walked right behind Josie Wells, and I'm protective of her. Uh, and, and I told him in the video, I said, I said, hey, fucking watch it when he went over by the girl. Uh, you know, and I felt, you know, as though I was clearly being provoked, and I said, oh, I can't get in a fight because I have a gun on my hip. If, uh, you know, if, if somebody wants to uh, threaten me and intimidate me and, and harass me, uh, you know, maybe I do leave the gun at home. And maybe I, you know, if somebody thinks that they're a big fucking badass and wants to try something with me, then I'll leave the gun at home and I'll fight. Alright. Yeah, I have respect for people who, like, have, you know, firearms and use firearms. I'm not really someone who cares to make it part of my activism, but, um, I think that people who do should be very responsible about it. And, uh, yeah, I've seen violent confrontations on the streets here in Keene. Every time I've thought, we need more people with cameras as opposed to, we need more people with guns. Not everyone agrees with that, but... Well, I, I, come, with a, I come with a camera and a gun on my hip. And I prefer the camera. Good to hear. Okay. All right, cool. I'm gonna get back to what I was doing. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Peace.